Silver! Away! A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains fought crime and criminals throughout the western United States. But he did more than bring law and order to a lawless frontier. He protected the property and savings of honest men and women from confidence men. He protected their lives from hostile Indians. And his name has come down to us as the greatest champion of justice the West ever knew. Return with us now those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for San Pedro! Hi, oh, Silver! Away! It was at ten o'clock on a bright summer morning that George Casey, foreman of the Flying W, rapped at the back door of the ranch house. Morning, ma'am. Oh, good morning, George. Mr. Walker about? He said something about talking over how many new hands we was going to hire. Just step in. Thanks, ma'am. I called about this morning, but he didn't answer, so I just let him sleep. Oh, I didn't mean to bother him. Oh, sure, it's time he was getting up anyhow. Only reason I ain't roused him before is on account of him staying up late last night with Firefly and that new cold of hers. Uh, Mary? I'm in here, Ma. Call your pa. Tell him George is in the kitchen waiting. All right. Won't take him long. Just have a chair. Thanks. Yeah. Bacon, ma'am? Mm, smells mighty good. <laughs> May and her pa are two of a kind. For my sake, if they didn't have pie on the table at least once a day, there'd be no living with them. <laughs> well, but it's a chore standing over a hot stove so much. I reckon you're just about the best cook there is around here, though, ma'am. <laughs> I wish you'd tell that to Bart. He says that... Ma! Oh, good morning, Miss George. Oh, howdy, Miss Mary. Did pa say he was getting up? Point there. If he ain't, he's around the side of the house washing up. You tell him. But Ma, his bed wasn't even slept in. So, whatever are you talking about? It's so. You can just go look. Pa ain't been there. Well, now that's a funny thing. But I heard him in there last night, and then when he came in from the barn, oh, Mary, you must be joking. I'm not either joking, Ma. You just go look. Well, I, I guess I'd better. I'll go with you, ma'am. I don't understand it. That his room? Uh-huh. Did he make up his bed himself? Oh, he'd never do that. Go on if Miss Mary wasn't right. But I... See? George, could he have got to worrying about Firefly and gone back? Well, I looked in the barn before I come here. Looked in the corral, too. And when I see none of the horses he rides as a rule have been saddled, I, well, I figured this is where I'd find him. Then where could he have got to, Ma? Well, I, I declare I don't know. Who oh, that beat all? I... I reckon I'm just a fool, George, but... It is so strange for Bart to do a thing like this. I, I'm scared. No, no, ma'am, don't get upset. Likely nothing's happened that can't be easy explained. What's this, Ma? Uh, give it to me. But what is it? 
Oh, just the envelope. A letter come in for you, Pa. Well, I left it while he was out, so I put it here where he'd be sure to see it. Then it proves you did hear him, ma'am. He was here and took the writing with him. George, what'll I do? <laughs> ma'am, you go back and tend to your bacon before it burns. I'll tell the boys and have them look around. You, you think that... I think, ma'am, that when we find him, your husband's going to have the laugh of his life seeing the scare he gave us. Now, don't you worry none at all. It's all right, Ma. Pa's all right. Yes, yes, child, of course. Nevertheless, Bart Walker was not found that day, nor that week, nor in the years that followed. No one had seen his departure. No rumors of his existence in another part of the country drifted back to the Flying W. No reason why he should have vanished ever came to light. Ten years passed. And while his daughter became a beautiful young woman, his wife, broken by sorrow, became embittered against the world. Even George Casey, whose loyalty had preserved the ranch, was not safe from the lash of her tongue. George! George! Ma'am? Come here. Feeling uncomfortable, ma'am? I'm always feeling uncomfortable. My nail and body, and it's a wonder I wasn't put away in my grave years ago. Not that anybody around here'd care. Shucks now, But that ma'am. ain't what I wanted to see you for. Were you I... calling me, Mother? Oh. You were calling George, I thought... You come here, too. What I got to say is for both of you. Yes, Mother. You're both together in this. Scheming and ungrateful, that's what you are. Seems like I don't count for nothing no more. Oh, I suppose when a body gets my age, he ought to expect such things. Oh, gracious knows Oh, I... Mother, that's not so. Ain't you a little bit hard on us, ma'am? <laughs> that's right. Call me a story, tell it to my face. Please, Mother. If we've done anything to hurt you, won't you tell us what it is? As if you don't know. Gosh, ma'am, you've got me stung for fair. I, I... What about yesterday? <laughs> well, don't stand there like the cat got your tongue. Thought you'd put something over on me, didn't you? But because I'm old and can't get around by myself, I wouldn't know what was going on. Now, don't deny it. I ain't no fool for all I'm old and feeble. I know what you mean, Mother. And if it was anybody's fault, it was mine. It isn't fair for you to blame George. He stood right there when you ordered Mr. Richmond off this place, didn't he? But... <clears throat> and you, George. You'd have kept it secret from me. Drawn my wages. Owing me for the food you eat and the clothes you wear and the home you got and going behind my back to scheme again me. Mother, don't talk like that to George. You haven't the right. George has done more for us than we'll ever be able to repay him. No, no, I not did... quite, Miss Mary. You needn't stand up for me again, your ma. Besides, you come right down to it, I reckon I did do oh, wrong. Oh, you admit it, do you? Yes, I might do. I guess I was exceeding my rights. But, ma'am, I'm acquainted with this here Richmond gent, and you ain't. He's as crooked as a rattler and as tricky as a, as a night prowling lobo. He's not the fellow of you to do business with. Offered a fair price for the place, didn't he? Well... Didn't he? Yes, and you could call it that, I reckon. But that's why I'd mistrust him. It ain't his style to do business fair and square. If he'd offered you 30000 then you could be doggone sure the place is worth a heap more. He never made an honest trade in all his life. Finger Barnes is honest, ain't he? Yes, sir. Would he give us 30000 Likely wouldn't. Well, then. I got to hold of what I said. I'd want to know what's behind Richmond's offer before I give him a yes or a no. It ain't up to you to do either. I own the flying W. You're just the foreman. Yes. Mother, you'll have to listen to me. <laughs> I don't care what you think. You've got to listen. You aren't planning to sell because of the money. You'd sell for half as much. The only reason you're selling is to move away from here. Oh, it is, is it? Yes, it is. You're afraid I'll marry Tom Craig. You want to take me where I can't see him again. Tom Craig, Tom Craig, that's all I ever hear from you anymore. If I ever seen a worthless, natural-born loafer in all why, my days... Why, I... ma'am, Tom's right well thought of around here. He's real up and coming. Hard worker, too. Shuck, someday he's that's gonna... enough. Oh, what's the use of trying to talk to you, Mother? It isn't Tom. If I were interested in anyone else, you'd say the same of him. Just because Father... Don't mention your father's name in this house. I'm sorry, Mother. I, I didn't mean to... You're both against me, both of you. I'll try to save my daughter all the misery and disappointment I've gone through. And what thanks do I get for it? None. None at all. Please. Get out. Leave me alone. I'm sick of you. Sick of the sight of both of you. You scheme again me. Talk again me. You both hate me. Everybody hates me. All I try to do what is right. Mother, Mother, get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Come on, Miss Mary. Can't you see your ma's tired? We'll let her rest for a bit. I'll close the door, ma'am. Then get nothing will be get disturbing out, you. Yeah, we're going. And if Mr. Richmond comes back, you send him in to me. He'll get off this place and don't never come back. Oh, oh 
George. Oh, George, I, I don't know what to do. What to do? Ever since father... Now, Miss Mary, you listen to me. Your ma's a mite unreasonable, sure. It's awful hard for a girl your age to put up with it. But always recollect this. Your ma's had a hard time of it. And she thinks so much of you, she wants to save you from going through the same. But, no, but you, I... you listen. Maybe she's wrong. Offhand, I'd allow she was, but she's your ma. She's my boss. And it ain't up to us to criticize. We, we keep still, and you know what I bet you? A month from now, you'll be wondering what all the fuss was about. You just wait and see. In the cafe at San Pedro, Richmond sat at an isolated table with a dark, stockily built Easterner. As they carried on a low-toned conversation, Richmond failed to notice a tall, broad-shouldered stranger who stood with his back to the bar watching them. It was a famous Lone Ranger in disguise. Richmond was tense as he spoke, and every now and then he pounded the table to emphasize his words. I tell you, Gorman, it's there. I seen it, seen it, I tell you. You seen the mine, Richmond, or the map? Don't think me a fool because I'm from the East. I know very well for the last 50 years this district's been full of swindling prospectors willing to tell how to find the lost bonanza for a prize. If you know it, don't you think I know it even better? You should. I've seen the mine itself. That's better. Think I'm lying? No, Richmond. If you put it that way, I am perfectly willing to agree that you've probably seen a mine. But how do you know that it's a... That it's a lost bonanza? Yes. You know the whole story? It was found in the first place. Who found it and how it was lost again? I've heard a little, not much. Well, it don't take long to tell. Found by a fellow named Prindle. The way he found it was by accident. His burrow slipped on some loose shale and fell into a canyon. Prindle didn't know whether it had been killed or not. He climbed down to put it out of its misery in case it hadn't. When he looked around for a way to climb up again, he found these nuggets. Nuggets as big as his fist. They still fell as a lie that's seen him and can swear to it. And then... And then Prindle couldn't never go back there again. Because he'd shown the goal and there was a hundred fellas waiting to follow him. If he took him to the place, most any one of them would be willing to kill to get it for himself. As I recall, Prindle died keeping his secret. Is that right? Just so. What makes you so certain you found it? Gorman, I seen that burl skeleton. I've seen what's left of Prindle's pack saddle with his name on it. And what's more, I've seen the gold... Nuggets like they tell of. Where? Huh? <laughs> oh, no, you don't. That's my secret. Then why have you told me any part of it? Because I need you. I know where the gold is. I get cash enough to buy the property it's on. It's included in land belonging to a certain ranch, and I'll have to buy the whole outfit to keep from being suspicioned. But after I've done that, I won't have cash left to develop the mine. So that's where you come in. Just how? you got good connections back east. You can raise what cash is needed in such a way that it won't cost us control to borrow it. Sure, you and me. We'll float this thing together. And you needn't raise a penny till the land is mine and I've shown you the gold. Now, you tell me where you can lose on a proposition like this. It sounds all right, but we'll both lose if you aren't more careful. Huh? That old fellow behind you looks to me as though he's blind. His face is badly scarred. He's been edging over the... Yeah, he has, has he? No. As for sticking your ugly face in what ain't your business, I ought to you take you... You want to get drilled for hitting a tent that old? Craig, who asked you to butt in? Step on a snake like you, I don't need an invite. What, oh, blast you? Look out, Tom, he's drawn. Oh! The stranger shot the gun right from his hand. Reach for that other gun and you'll get worse. Craig, take that blind man and get him out of here. Right. Stop him! Take Snake! Get the bella! Keep going, Tom, I'll cover for you. We're going, Richmond, and I've got you covered. Call off your men. The second they fire, I'll let you have it. Don't pay no attention to him. He's bluffing. Drill him. Cut him down. You fool. That fellow means business. They're gone anyhow, boss. You won't. We should follow. Get after him. Get after him. They can't stand up to me like that and get away with it. Richmond, get a hold of yourself. Nothing was overheard to hurt us. Yeah? What's that to me? I run this town and I run it my own way. Get those fellas. You hear me? Get them. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Not 
to continue our story. Leaving young Tom Craig with a trail split just outside town, the Lone Ranger took the old man he had rescued in the cafe to his camp. Later, when he had removed his disguise and again wore his mask... You haven't told me your name. I... Uh, you can call me Dan. That'll do as well as another. In other words, you'd rather not tell me your real name, is that it? I lost my name a good long time ago. Just like you did, Lone Ranger. You know me? I do. But your sight... Friend, blind folk like me don't need eyes to see with. We learn other ways. I ain't so sure, but they ain't better ways. The things you can see with your eyes sometimes fool you. And besides... Yes? Well, once a good spell back, I heard your voice. I never forgot it. We met? We did. I don't remember you. <laughs> Look at my face. I am. I know what it's like. Folks have told me. You've been badly burned. Uh-huh. That's how I got so scarred and lost the use of my eyes. Who that knew me before would recognize me after? There's no call for you to be surprised that you can't recollect me. You look as though you've been doing without food. <laughs> for so long, it just don't seem to matter no more. Which all goes to show a fella can get used to most anything. Have you money? <laughs> money? What's that? Have you a family? I... No. No, I reckon not. What were you doing in San Pedro? Why were you so interested in that fellow Richmond? Richmond? Was that his name? I never heard of him before. And as for being in San Pedro, well, it could have been Dodge City or Denver or Frisco. To a hobo like me, they're all the same. But you're not a stranger here. <laughs> what made you say that? Well, I just had that impression. Well, there's no call for you to think a thing like that. I was never in San Pedro before in all my life. You hear me? I never was. I never Hold was here before. Hold on. What's there to get excited about? But you... I beg your pardon, friend. My nerves, they're, they're jumpy. Sometimes for no reason at all. Of course. I should have realized. I've been asking you too many questions. What you need is some sleep, and in the morning another good meal. You... You're right kind. Before you sleep, however, there's something I want to know, if you care to answer it. Forget what I said. Ask what you want. I'll tell you plain enough if you're speaking out of turn. Very well. You were in the cafe. You were close to the table where Richmond sat with that fellow from the east. You must have overheard their conversation. Then, what was it they said? And what is your story? Saddle Silver again. Ah. Now then, what have you lost by telling us the truth? You could have told it in the first place. I guess you savvy why I didn't want to. Well, I see your point of view, but I don't agree with you. Now listen, now, wait. I... The main thing now is to get Richmond to reveal the location of the lost Bonanza. Uh -huh. It would be easy enough to step in and spoil the sale of the Flying W, but that doesn't solve the problem. For 50 years, prospectors and speculators have been searching for that mine. It's always been known it was somewhere in those hills to the west. Now we know it's on the Flying W property. But that doesn't narrow it down enough. You might hunt for it for the next ten years with the odds still a thousand to one against your finding it. You're right. Richmond knows the location of the man. He's the one who'll have to tell us how to reach it. Which he won't do less than he's got title to it. That's exactly it. The sale is spoiled, Richmond won't talk. Yes, so. The sale goes through, he'll talk. But too late to do us any good. And no way to get around it. I'm not so sure. Perhaps there is. Here, Selma. I'm ready. Thanks, Kimosabe. You going, Summers? I am. It got something to do with Richmond and the lost Bonanza. I'm calling on Tom Craig. If he'll agree to a suggestion, we'll have a way to trick Richmond. Huh? If... Well, <laughs> what do you got in mind? You'll learn that later. Come on, Silver. I am Silver. How are you? It was the following day that Tom Craig rode up to the Flying W Ranch house. George Casey called to him. Oh, whoa, whoa, boy. Oh, whoa, whoa. Hi, Tom. Yeah. Uh, howdy, George. I saw sure headlock, Tom. What are you doing here? Don't you know the fuss Kate will make if she sees you? <laughs> Still don't like me, huh? Shucks, young fella. She ain't got no more use for you than she's got for so much poison. 
You know you oughtn't to be... Where's coming. Mary? Huh? Oh. Oh, she's somewhere in the house, I reckon. But, Tom, you listen to me. Tom. <laughs> Sorry, George. Haven't the time to listen. Hello, Mary. Surprised to see me? Uh, Think your ma had me too scared to show up again? You, you said you wouldn't come here unless I told you it was all right. Look, Mary, I got more than one reason for showing up this time. One I can't tell you about just yet. But the other's the most important anyhow. We're going to settle this right now. No, Tom. Oh, I know how you feel. I, I know you don't like to go again, your ma. But you got to see that she ain't being fair to us. You'll grow up enough to know your own mind, and she ought to be willing to admit it. I, I know. We, we are going to get hitched, aren't we? I've given you my promise, Tom. Then what do you say we march into your mall and tell her right out? What's the use of putting off something that has to be done sometime anyway? It, it would upset her. Is she likely to get any more upset now than later? No, but... Well, then come on. Where is she? We'll see her together. She's in the parlor. Then that's where we're going. Mary? Come on. Yes, Mother? Who's there? Who are you talking to? Oh, it's Joseph. Come on, what do you say? I suppose we might just as well. <laughs> that's better. You gonna answer me, Mary? Oh, it's, uh, it's Tom, Mother. Howdy, Mrs. Walker. Where? The idea. Mother, Keep we want... still. Young man, you turn right around and find your way out of here. You ain't welcome in this house. I think Mary's got something to say to you first, Then she can say it later, well as now. You clear out. Mother. You tell him No. To... I've got something to say to you. And I'm gonna say it while Tom's here. Mary, have you gone Tom out? and I are getting married. And we're going to get married just as soon as we can. Why? Why? I'm tired of being bullied. Sell the ranch, I don't care. It isn't going to make any difference. I've got my own life to live, and no one has a right to live it for me. Quiet! I, I never... never heard such nonsense in all my life. You're my daughter, and you'll do like I say. I am going to sell the ranch. I sent to town for Mr. Richmond to come out here, and I'm expecting him now. And just as soon as the place is sold, I'm taking you where this... This scheming loafer can't see you. Man, you've got me sized up all wrong. Don't you I... dare open your mouth in this house. You'll... Uh, Mr. Richmond here, ma'am. There. Now I'll show you. Send him in. Good afternoon, Miss Walker. Good afternoon. I'm glad you showed up on time. Bring the cash with you? <laughs> I sure did, ma'am. Got it right here. Good. Now we'll see who's boss around here. Deeds all ready. Pay me the cash and get the papers signed over and the place is yours. It'll be just fine, Miss Walker... Won't you listen to me just a second? Well? Don't sell, ma'am. Ain't I told you that this fellow won't never give you the best of a deal? George, your advice ain't wanted. What's more, you'll witness the papers. Here they are. Move that table closer to my chair here. Your pen and ink. We'll get this over with. Doggone, ma'am. I wish you'd listen to sense. Give me that pen. Uh, yes, ma'am. Mother. And you keep still. <laughs> Why, who, who <gasps> did that? All the blasted nerve out there. No. Can't you see he's blind? Leave him alone. Tom, help him. Find out what he wants. Oh, sure. Here, here you are, mister. Here's a place for you to sit. You got business here? Which, uh, which one of you is Ms. Walker? Here. What do you want? Ma'am, don't sell your ranch. Well, now that's a fine thing. Stranger telling me what to do? And just why are you making it your business? Ma'am, that's all I can say. Don't sell. But I... And by gosh, stranger, no, he's right. Ms. Walker, you can fire me after if you remind her. But I ain't gonna let you do this. That's flat. This deal ain't going through. It is. Who a mask man? Go and stand back. Richmond, pay Miss Walker the money and get your deed. Right. Why, you... I warned you. Stand back. A fine state of affairs when a masked man has to force everybody to do what I tell him. Hurry up. Finish this sale. Richmond, give her the money. <laughs> sure thing. Here you are, ma'am. It's all there right to the penny. And just hand me that pen I'll sign. Yeah, thanks. Here you are, ma'am. You're next, George. Sign that as a witness. You can't sign... get off my place. I can get somebody else to sign if you won't. No. You'll need another witness. Tom? I might as well, I reckon. There. That finish it? It does. <laughs> ma'am, I'm congratulating you on a mighty fine sale. I'll take this here deed and have it entered at the county seat, and then I'll... Then you might as well tell them why you bought the ranch, Richmond. Eh? Huh? What have you got to lose now? Huh? What's a masked man mean? Tell them. Tell them about the mine. Once the place was yours, you planned to tell Gorman anyway. How do you know so much about my business? Well, that doesn't matter. Show them what a good deal you made for yourself. <laughs> well, it was just business. Was nothing illegal about it. Don't see why not. Go on. What, what is it? Well, folks, Miss Walker just signed away a fortune. For $30,000, she traded what was worth a hundred times as much. A fortune? Sure, the lost bonanza. No, you, it's on our place? <laughs> on my place now, miss. And if you don't believe me, the mine's right below the trail to Cedar Point. Between that big oak was blasted by lightning and the curve just beyond. 
down below in the canyon there. Well, there. You, you see, ma'am, I told you. I told you what he was up to. You, you did no such thing. You never even mentioned the mine once. Well, how could I when I didn't know what he was after? But I warned you he'd be getting the best of you. I... He didn't. No, well, thanks to you, stranger, I did. If you I... look at that deed again, you'll see that it's not a description of the Flying W, but of Tom Craig's place. You've just paid $30,000 for Tom's ranch. Craig? Craig? It ain't so. It can't be. Don't worry. Tom will give you back that money. All we wanted to know was the location of the mine. Well, I'll be doggone. You fooled me. You can't do this to me, are we? We tricked you as you would have tricked Mrs. Walker. Now, get out. Right, get out. I'll get even. <laughs> you can't do this to me. And don't slam the door on your way out. <laughs> <laughs> but the deed, how Tom did Tom you... prepared a deed to his place and substituted it when this man here entered. Everyone was looking at him, and Tom wasn't being watched. But, but who is he? Why did he do this for us? Shall I tell them, Bart? No, don't. I think I'd better. Mrs. Walker, this is your husband. Mr. No, oh, wait. Ten years ago, he disappeared. On the day he left, he received an anonymous letter telling him that if he would go to a certain part of his range, he'd find the men stealing his cattle. He did. Was shot and lost his memory. Oh, his memory didn't come back to him until he was caught in the fire in which he lost his sight. He came back not to tell who he was, but to learn how his family had gotten on. If I'd let him have his way, he'd have disappeared again. He felt that after his absence, after the accident that cost him his sight, he wouldn't be wanted here. I knew he was wrong. Father. Mary. Mary. My little girl. My little girl. Yes, yes Father. It's his voice that I knew what hurt it. Oh, Father, I'm such an old fool. Never think of Forget it, honey. I've been gone, but now I'm back again. And thanks to the mask man, we can start all over like before. Just think of that and nothing else. Oh, The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.